In this video, I would like to share with you nine tips that have helped me to take my guitar practice to the next level. And I hope that they can help you as well. These tips are tailored for guitarists who are serious about their instrument and want to achieve the best results possible. So if you are one of them, let's dive right in. My tip number one is that you need to understand that practicing and playing are two different activities. Playing is obviously when you perform what you already know, whereas practicing is all about dealing with things that you are not comfortable with yet. There are five key differences between practicing and playing. Number one, the goal of practicing is to improve something whereas the goal of playing might be to enjoy performing music or to create an emotional and memorable experience for our listeners. Number two, practicing is about working on our weaknesses, but playing is all about using our strengths. Number three, when we are practicing, we repeat the same problems but over and over again. When we play music, there are only few repetitions of the same spot. Number four, during practice session, most of the time we work in slower tempos, to really get things done. When we are playing, we play in the original tempo of the song. And number five, when we are practicing, we are dealing with parts and pieces of songs, riffs, solos or scales. Whereas when we play, we perform the whole song start to finish. So we can safely say that practicing and playing are two different activities, but many guitarists mix these two together. And by combining them, you are decreasing the benefits of both. If you don't practice properly, you are not improving as fast as you could have. And by practicing during the time when you are supposed to play and perform, you are really not enjoying the music, and but you are probably thinking about what you are going to do. And you might also be beating yourself up in your head for not being able to play well. The key is to understand the differences between playing and practicing. And then every time you pick up your instrument to practice, just remind yourself that you are going to work on something that you cannot do well and that it might get difficult and it, you might get frustrated, but you are well prepared for that and you are willing to do the work in order to get better. Tip number two is that material beats the method or in other words, what you practice is more important than how you practice it. I learned this tip years ago from Tim Ferriss's book, Four Hour Chef, which is a fantastic book if you want to become a great cook or if you want to discover how you can learn and acquire skills faster. So before you spend any time creating a crazy six hour long guitar practice plan, make sure that the stuff you are going to practice will actually lead you towards your goals. For example, if you want to become a good rock elite player, don't just learn scales. You can practice scales with laser focus, but no matter how long you do it, you will not become a good rock soloist. I can promise you that. You need to learn real solos, analyze them, try to find out why do you like them. You need to learn about phrasing and how to turn scales into music. And most importantly, you need to try to compose your own solos. This is so much more, more valuable for you than just learning scales. So again, what you practice is more important than how you practice it. There are three criteria that can help you to choose the right stuff to practice. The first is that you need to make sure that what you practice will help you reach your musical goals. So if you are not sure how to do that, you probably do need a guitar teacher, teacher that will help you with that. The second is to choose practice material that really excites you and you would like to start practicing right away. And the third is that the difficulty of this material is just right for you. So it's not too difficult and not too easy. So you can improve at the right pace. I would definitely recommend learning mostly songs and solos you like, because besides learning great songs, you also learn all the necessary skills and techniques that you might need in the future. You can treat songs as exercises to help you improve whatever you need to improve. And there is really no need for additional exercises that are mostly boring and for the most, most part also useless. Tip number three, limit the amount of things you practice. For a long time, I tried to cram too many things into my practice schedule because I wanted to become a great player and I want to become a great player as quickly as possible. So I tried to squeeze in as much as I could. However, I realized that this approach was not right for me and it's probably not good for you either. 
I wasn't present with anything I was practicing, I was always rushing and I felt frustrated and overwhelmed. Then I tried practicing only one thing at a time, but I found it hard to focus on the same thing for more than an hour. After an hour uh, it took pure willpower to continue and the results were mediocre at best. Finally I found a happy medium. I started practicing two or three things and after years of struggle I found the perfect routine for me. These days I usually practice one thing for my rhythm chops, one for my lead playing and the third thing is working on my repertoire. Nothing fancy, but it works fine for me. You might also be tempted to cram too many things into your routine, so try to limit the amount of things you practice at once with a specific number. Only add a new thing when you have finished the previous one. This way you won't end up trying to practice 15 things simultaneously. You might be surprised how much you can accomplish by focusing on fewer things instead of spreading yourself thin. Tip number four is to plan your guitar practice in advance. If you have just one hour for your guitar in a day, the last thing you want to do is to spend 10 minutes of it planning what you are going to work on. Or even worse, to practice whatever you feel like. This is not a very efficient way how to reach your musical goals. And a little planning goes a long way. Since I practice only a few things at each moment, it is not very difficult for me to plan my next practice session. I keep my practice journal right beside me when I am practicing and after I finish I jot down a few notes to know what I need to work on next. It is pretty simple but very effective. The next day I just open my practice journal and I know instantly what are the important tasks for the day. Don't make this too complicated. Just few notes are much better than nothing. And also get yourself a practice journal. Tip number five, practice in short intense bursts with clear goals. As we talked about in tip number one, it is very easy to mix practicing and playing together. So to avoid this, practice in short, intense and focused bursts. Since you have planned your practice session in advance, you know exactly what you need to work on. Just choose what you want to practice first, set a timer and off you go. The length of your practice block is up to you. I would suggest starting with 15 or 20 minutes and adjust as you get more experienced. During this time you are not allowed to do anything else but the activity that you have chosen. For every time block you want to set a specific mini goal to program your mind to focus on that particular thing. Uh, based on my notes from previous days, I know what is my goal, so I just remind myself to focus on that and try to forget everything else. The more you train your brain like that, the easier it will become for you to keep focus on the task at hand. I believe that this is the key if you want to get really good at guitar. Not getting distracted by millions of things that you could be practicing at any given moment and instead keeping your focus on the task that is right in front of you. My tip number six is to disappear when practicing. To get the most done during your limited practice time you want to avoid distractions at all cost. It's been now scientifically proven that the task switching is killing your progress so we need to avoid it. There are basically two types of distractions that break our focus. There are external distractions like your phone ringing, notifications or somebody talking to you and there are internal distractions so your inner dialogues, thoughts about what you are going to eat or tasks that you need to do. To eliminate external distractions I try to practice early in the morning when nobody is up yet so there is not a big chance that somebody would distract me. If that is not possible and I practice during the day at home, I try to physically disappear so there is less chance that somebody would try to talk to me. With a little kid in house this is not so easy, but I try it anyway. And also I have my phone in silent mode and with the screen facing down so no distractions are coming from that source either. To eliminate internal distractions I keep a blank sheet of paper in my practice journal and every time my mind comes up with, a, with some brilliant idea that I don't want to forget I just jot it down and keep moving forward. Interestingly my mind only comes up 
with brilliant ideas when I'm practicing. Once I jot down the idea, my brain is satisfied and stops bothering me with the same thing over and over again and I can keep my focus on what I am practicing. Of course, there are days when keeping your focus seems like the most difficult thing in the world, no matter how much you try. But that's okay, it happens to all of us, so just keep practicing. Tip number seven is to record yourself. To get an objective idea on how well can you play something, don't try to evaluate it while you are playing. You will get a much better idea on how anything sounds when you record yourself and then listen back. This is priceless if you want to discover problem spots in your playing. You might be tempted to think that you don't need to record yourself, that you can tell pretty accurately how well you can play something without ever recording yourself. But I would strongly suggest that you record yourself often, even if you feel confident that you can tell what needs improvement. Many times I was shocked how awful something sounded even though I thought it was pretty amazing. Recording yourself and then listening back give you the most honest and object objective look on how things really are. I know that many guitar students refuse to record themselves because of a fear of sounding bad, but hiding from the problems won't ever solve them. I prefer looking the truth in the eyes and then hiding from it. If I sucked at something, then be it. At least I know it and I can do something about it. I usually record myself on my phone or I just plug my guitar di directly into audio interface and record that way. Sometimes I also, also do a video recording because I can watch my hands at work and spot things that I might otherwise miss. Like for example too much tension in my hands. It is so easy these days to record yourself that you should definitely take advantage of it. If you apply only one tip from this video, make sure it is this one. Tip number eight is to be consistent with your guitar practice. This is something that should be obvious, yet I see so many guitar students having a hard time sticking with it. If you take guitar seriously, practicing five to six times a week is a must. You might need to push yourself a little bit in the beginning, but once your habit is developed, it will be hard for you to not practice guitar every day. It just becomes part of your day and part of who you are. And getting better each day is really a fantastic feeling. Personally, I practice guitar almost every day because I like it so much. I like to learn new things, I like to push my limits and I like to improve my skills. And also the feeling on making progress is really addictive. And it is only possible if you are consistent. And also, this is a, if you are consistent, it's a sign that you are serious about your playing. The more time there is between your practice sessions, the more stuff you forget and it takes longer to get back on track. Don't get me wrong, taking a break is sometimes necessary, but as a general rule, you want to practice consistently. Think like an athlete. You don't train when you feel like it, but when you need to and that is pretty much every day. One of the main reasons why people fail to practice consistently is that they create huge and unrealistic practice plans for themselves. It is a sure way how to feel overwhelmed and frustrated all the time. Focus on consistency, even if you practice for 15 minutes a day. It is much better than to practice three hours on a Saturday. Once you have few weeks under your belt, then you can add more time, but be smart about it. And finally, my tip number nine is to think long term. Even if you choose the best practice materials, have the best teacher and develop the best practice methods, it will still take you at least few years before you are any good. And even then you will feel like you are just beginning to get somewhere. Therefore you need to play the long game. If you are serious about becoming a great guitar player, that's a lifelong pursuit. It's not a matter of weeks or months. You can have the most grandiose goals, but you need to be ready to work on your micro goals each and every day. There will be always more stuff to learn and more things to improve than you have time in a day. That's just how it is. The moment you finish one solo, there is another one waiting for you. There's always the next thing. So in the words of Tommy Emmanuel, this is an endless road. There is only beginning, but not the end. 
I do need to remind myself of this daily so I can act with diligence, focus and right mindset. If you can act with intention today and let your goals motivate you to get the best out of you, then you are already winning. And each day you win, you are one day closer to reaching your goals. And once you reach them, you realize that there are new goals waiting for you. And that's just how it is. Don't rush, stay patient and enjoy the ride. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if so, please subscribe and I will see you soon in the next one.